Hello, and welcome to Automate with Red Hat Ansible. I'm Daniel Newman, Principal Analyst and Founding Partner at Futurum Research, and I'll be your host here for this series of eight-minute, high-impact interviews talking about the power and opportunities with automation. Today, on this episode, I'm going to be joined by Darren Orzakowski, and we're going to be talking about automation at large and the opportunities that companies and enterprises have in automation. Darren Orzakowski, welcome to the show. Thank you, Daniel. It's great to have you here. You've got a wealth of experience. You've come, I've read your background. You've come from other, you know, big companies in the space. You're here now at Red Hat Ansible. Uh, you work at a very high level, executives across the industry, many different companies. Give me a little bit of the background. Talk a little bit about yourself, your experience in automation, and what you do here at Red Hat Ansible. Sure. I manage product marketing for Ansible at Red Hat. I'm very passionate about management. As you said, I've been in the space for quite a while. I've seen what management can do for companies, especially around domains like networking and virtualization. When management came on board, those technologies shut off and grew very quickly. And automation is on the cusp of that. I think there's big things coming for automation too. Yeah, absolutely. And and I'm going to start there in a big, talking about this in a big way because what I'd love to have you with your wealth of experience, your wealth of knowledge, is talk a little bit about the ITDM, their role, and why you see the importance of these folks becoming evangelists for automation within their organizations? That's a great question and very timely. We just completed research with 400 companies where we asked them about what they're doing with automation and how they're approaching automation. About 80% of those companies said that they're moving from automation as tactical to a strategic approach to automation. Many of those customers talked about automation being even being a boardroom imperative, meaning that At the boardroom level, automation is being called out very significantly as something the company is focused on. The reason for that is because of the efficiencies that the companies are gaining, literally hundreds of thousands of hours in efficiencies from focusing on automation. There's also an angle of what's in it for the IT decision makers themselves, as you kind of hinted at. From a career perspective, being able to be attached to an initiative like that that's at the boardroom level is obviously a big deal. Also, companies are really struggling now to hire, as you know better than anybody else out there. And from a technical perspective, if I can reposition people and have them doing something that is much more strategic and is not manual, manual, boring, repetitive tasks, it's a big win for those people and also for the company. Yeah, there's no doubt that automation is going to propel companies forward. And, you know, this isn't a new thing, but the opportunities... Uh, the automation of automation, the technology, the tools, the tool set stuff you guys are building is making it so much more uh, achievable and available to organizations as a whole. My view as an analyst is, you know, companies have kind of two major challenges. They have the A challenge, which is selling automation inside the organization and getting people to buy in the cultural. And then, of course, you have the technological challenge of it. Like, hey, which technology partners do we pick? How do we, you know, how do we deploy it at scale? But you, you know, in that research that you just spoke to, you synthesize it, the interest is peaking and there's a lot of excitement. What do you attribute that to? Well, we saw automation was already hot before the pandemic. And then the pandemic exposed new use cases for automation. And they probably weren't uh, as, a, as apparent as they were before to companies. So the immediate use cases we heard from companies coming in for the pandemic was how do, how do I extend corporate resources out to their remote employees? They needed to stand up and provision VPNs, for example, very, very quickly and to be able to get that in place so that they could just operate and be efficient and keep their businesses going. From there, there's other companies like Blue Cross Blue Shield of North Carolina. You can imagine what happened to their business because of the pandemic and having to respond to what was happening. They literally had to stand up thousands of rel virtual servers overnight to be able to respond to the demand from their customers. The last customer I'll talk about that really transformed their business was CarMax. So if you think about buying a car, probably the last thing you wanted to do at that point was to be in a car with test driving with a salesperson. You didn't want to do a lot of paperwork. You didn't want, you just wanted to get in, get out. And that's not the way things were set up at that point. So CarMax re-architected their entire business. They ended up saving 50,000 hours uh, for for their business by automating a lot of the manual tasks that were going on and then transforming all of it. What is interesting is that didn't stop for CarMax. That is going to keep going for them uh, and they will keep building on automation as a use case and as a strategic initiative as they go forward. 
Yeah, and if anyone's following the current market conditions, everyone knows that used car sales and automotive sales exploded. Okay. Uh, it, it drove a big part of the semiconductor shortage because mm-hmm. everyone thought there would be less and then there ended up being more. more yep. But what you're sort of bringing up is not just the actual overall demand, but was the fact that the process had to be redefined. And, right. and as the process got redefined, there was new protocols for how you managed uh, the entire workflow, the data input flow, which because obviously there was a lot less walk-in and human traffic. But then at the same time, when people did get to the store, how did you do it safely to deliver it. That's right. It's a, it's a pretty exciting set of circumstances and a great example for automation. Now, with that in mind, obviously the opportunities are large, but for an ITDM, this can all be quite daunting. So what are some of the you know tips from those case studies you shared that, you know, maybe t- to get them started? Yeah, we get that, get that question a lot. Where do I start? Uh, and we have a lot of briefings, our executive briefing center, where the persona you're talking about is coming in and talking to us. Many times they have Ansible in place. Most of the time they have Ansible in place. They're trying to move from the what, meaning the product, to the how. So how do I automate at scale? And how do I bring automation to expand the use cases across my organization? So there's a number of things that uh, we've been doing with them. First, it's based on where the customer is in the automation journey that we, we often talk about. Some customers are very early. They're just getting started. They need to pick a point where they can get a lot of value out of it very quickly. One of the places we see customers starting where there's huge opportunity is in the network. So networks, as you know, are extremely complex. There's a lot of different vendors in a network environment. Could be Cisco in there, F5, Juniper. They all have their own element management tools. So Ansible comes in and abstracts away a lot of the complexity. Uh, and makes it possible for them to do configuration management much quicker. And then to your point, as they start to evolve and mature, they can move to higher level use cases like compliance to make sure that they have best practices in place for how to configure those networks and that they can move on from there. Yeah, absolutely. You mentioned a few. You have networking, you have compliance, you have operations, of course you have security. And a lot of people think about automation a lot more through the lens of processes for like applications, but there's so many other things to automate, That's right. which is really the just scale and opportunity. One other example I read a little bit on, I'd love to get, get a little feedback from you. You mentioned was Discover Financial. They yes. had a really interesting story if you could share a little bit more. Discover has an amazing story. So they brought in a new CIO about 18 months ago. That new CIO put in a process called extreme automation and extreme automation is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, It means that if it's possible to automate, they will automate. They are relentless about what they're automating and how they're automating. So that new CEO did also something that was uh, even more unique. Uh, He brought in and he started something called an automation guild. So he started with a few leaders that knew how to automate. And those leaders started to bring in other IT leaders across the organization in other domains and and other areas to teach, teach them and show how they could automate and how to scale automation. Because of that, Discover has saved like 400,000 hours in efficiencies and time that they, they were had. If you do the math, it ends up being like 45 years of time that Discover has saved. Yeah, it's huge, huge. So I'd love to wrap up with one big question. All these companies, all these you know executives that you talk to, what's your one best piece of advice for getting started? You know, start small, but think big is something we often say to customers. So find a use case that you can gain a lot of efficiency out of, like networking that I just talked about, some place that you can gain a lot of efficiency and do it fast. And you'll be surprised how quickly Steam will build and how quickly other people in the organization start to notice what's going on. And automation will start to take off like it did at Discover. Great example, Darren Orzakowski. Thanks for joining me on the show. Thank you very much. Thank you for tuning in to Automate with Red Hat Ansible Automation Platform. Please subscribe to hear and watch all of these episodes. To learn more about Red Hat Ansible, you can follow the company on Twitter at Ansible or visit the website ansible.com. For more on Futurum Research, follow at Futurum Research on Twitter or on the web at futurumresearch.com. <laughs>